almost, almost as if we're, we're really on the bima together. And goodness knows we need Shabbat. I, th I think we need this Shabbat extra. Um, was there an election recently? Uh, oh yeah, there was that. And of course we learned just today that Hand High School has, has now closed their hybrid mode and are back to all virtual. And uh, we at the temple stopped our in-person services really at the time it was because of weather, but thank goodness it was the right time because of health. So we're here uh, in our Zoom room together. Uh, creating a sanctuary together. You know, one of the one of the bonuses, you have to look at the silver linings and one of the bonuses, we don't have to wear masks. So we can actually see each other and see each other's smiles and it goes a long way to sustaining the soul. Uh, I want to offer a, a, a special welcome uh, in, to our service this evening uh, to our scholar in residence, Michelle Paymar, who is here from Oh, there she is. And she is here from Vancouver, British Columbia. And we're so sad that you can't be here in person. Um, and we are so thrilled that we can do it anyway. And that, that we're gonna be able to take advantage of your presence and your knowledge and your passion for that Cairo Geniza. And we look forward to your sharing with us later in the service. And then of course, tomorrow evening as well. Um, I also want to give a shout out to Jill Lesage and Ethel Ann Chorney for making this weekend happen. And not only that, but having the brilliant insistence that we could even do a Middle Eastern uh, tapas, they're called mezzas, I suppose, and, uh, and, and to figure out how we could you know, do a pickup and delivery and have them be boxed. And so hope you enjoyed your, your falafel and your hummus or that you will enjoy those things uh, later on, either this evening or tomorrow evening. Uh, feeling the, 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 the burdens of this week, this past week, I, I asked the cantor if, if she would begin with, um, with singing a, a special piece. Uh, there's a piece, it's, Oh Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. And when you hear those words, oh Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, you might think it's more Christian gospel than Jewish nusach. And in fact, if you thought that, you'd be right, because it, 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 it started as a Christian gospel song. But it started as a Christian gospel song because the Christians that, that created the song were so inspired by the Jewish concept that we find in the book of Exodus, there's a, there's a verse that says, um, uh, oh Lord, let me make, a let, make, let me make a sanctuary so you can dwell among us. And so later generations of Jews were inspired by the Christians who were inspired by the Jews and uh, recreated this song for the synagogue and added the, the Hebrew verse from Exodus. And uh, so with that, I'm gonna ask if uh, Campbell would, would guide us and just remember to breathe the and meditation. Oh Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, and with thanksgiving I'll be
Shiru Ladonai, let's let's continue to sing on that. Shiru Ladonai, going to turn to our candle lighting now and everybody who has candles please get your candles and make sure they're in front of you for the candle lighting but i am going to ask jill lesage and ethel ann chorney uh to do the reading before the candle lighting and then to light the candles on behalf of us all and while they are lighting the candles and while you have a chance to light yours Cantor Boyle will sing uh, a, a light these lights song and then we'll go right into our blessing so I'm going to screen share our service so you can follow along with me. and Jill and Ethel Ann please as these Shabbat candles give light to all who behold them, so may we, by our lives, give light to all who behold us. As their brightness reminds us of the generations of Israel who have kindled light, so may we, in our own day, be among those who kindle light. Light your candles as we sing this song. Oh, hear my prayer, I sing to you. Be gracious to the ones I love, and bless them with goodness and mercy and peace.
evening. We are going to continue in our service with the singing of Lecha Dodi. And as you wish, stand seated, uh, but it is our custom. You know, Lecha Dodi means welcome my beloved. And for the purposes of this prayer, our beloved is the Shabbat that we welcome into our midst. And so when we get to the verse that begins with Bowi Kala, that's when traditionally we rise and face the door into which guests would come, uh, this guest being the holiday of Shabbat. So I'll leave that to you and we'll continue with the singing of Lecha Dodi. Lecha, Lecha Dodi, Likat, Likat Kala, Bene, Bene, Shabbat, Nekevela. Lecha, Lecha Dodi, Likat, Likat,
Ravim. Praise the God who turns light into darkness and darkness into light. Let's read together. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, creator of the tide of time. You guide the current of day into night, creating this moment of change in which stars flow through the heavens. We ride your wave of transformation away from work and struggle toward you and your holiness. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, from whom the evening flows. Baruch atah Adonai, hama'ariv aravim. And to Ahavat Olam, we read also together. Love through instruction, lessons through care, help through confusion. Adonai, when you gave us Torah, you revealed your love and compassion for us. Your Torah teachings guide us toward holiness and justice. What greater gift might we receive than the Torah, the heart of our lives? It is in our love of you that we strive to be the holy people we might be. Praise to you, Adonai, who expresses love of Israel through words of Torah. Baruch atah Adonai, ohev amo Yisrael. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Baruch Shem, Kevor Mahuto, Le'olam Continue responsively, and I'm going to ask uh, the campus to be the voice of the congregation. Uh, Love God with all the power of your heart, with its yearnings and passions. Love God with all you hold dear in life, and with the fullness of whatever the world offers you, both joy and sorrow. Teach children to cope, to dream, and to stretch to become their purpose, to live holy lives. Wrap these words around every deed, a garment of holy expression. Let these words shape your home, a dwelling of peace. Wherever you go, scatter the words as seeds or as drops of water into thirsty earth. Let these uh, nurture trees of life in your garden. Seal these words upon your heart. Let them course through and cleave soul to body that the sacred permeates all your being. I'm going to sing our Mokha, affirming 
that yet again waters and we will be redeemed. Majestic in holiness, awesome in splendor, working wonders. Your children witnessed your sovereignty, the sea splitting before Moses and Miriam. This is our God, they cried. Adonai will reign forever and ever. Praised are you, Adonai, for redeeming Israel. Baruch ata Adonai, Ga'al Israel. And we thank God for Shabbat. And we remember the people of Israel shall keep Shabbat. Observing Shabbat throughout the ages as a covenant for all time. It is a sign between me and the people of Israel. For in six days Adonai made heaven and earth. And on the seventh day God ceased from me and was refreshed. Yes, Mehru, Vemalehu, Teho, Shomre, 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 Shabbat. Sorry, I'm having a little tickle in my throat. Vekore, Onek, Shabbat. Yes, Mehru, Vemalehu, Teho, Shomre, 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 Shabbat, Vekore, Onek, Shabbat. Oh, 
more than the Jewish people have kept the time. It is the bat that has kept the Jewish people. And we turn now to our Amidah, here called the Tefillah. Tefillah means prayer, and of course, all these prayers are prayers, but this is considered the, the major prayer where we have an opportunity to talk one-on-one -on -one with, the, with the Holy One. And so for sure we need to pray that we might pray before the Holy One. So we begin with Adonai Sfatai. Adonai Sfatai Tiftach Uvi Agita Hilatecha Adonai, open up my lips, that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu, Elohei avoteinu ve'imoteinu, Elohei Abraham, Elohei Yitzhak, Elohei Yaakov, Elohei Sarah, Elohei Rivka, Elohei Rachel, Elohei Leah, Ha'el Hagadol, Hagibor, Vahanora, El El Yon, Gomel Chasadim Tovim, Vikonei Hakol, Mizacher Chasiafor Beimahot, Umevi Gula Lipne Bnei Ham, Leman Shemo Beahava. Melech Oseh Umoshiyah Umagain Baruch Atah Adonai Magain Abraham Vizrat Sarah Atah Gibor Leolam Adonai Mechayeh HaKol Atah Rav Lehoshiyah Mashiv HaBruach Umarid HaKashem Mechakel Chayim Bechesed Mechaye ha kobe rachamim rabim, so make no flim berofe holim, umati hasurim, umekaye memunato, li shine afar, micha mocha pagivarat, umito melach, melech me. You are holy, your name is holy, and those who are holy praise you every day. Blessed are you, Adonai, the holy God. Baruch ata Adonai, ha'el ha'kadosh. Days pass and the years vanish and we walk sightless among miracles. How ironic that it takes a plague, a pandemic, for us to see better, to see those miracles. And God, we pray that you will fill our eyes with seeing and our minds with knowing that we know there will be moments when your presence, like lightning, will illumine the darkness in which we walk. Help us to see wherever we gaze that the bush burns unconsumed. We are going to sing a song of peace. Cantor. Oh, say shalom. Scroll a little further. We're going to sing an oh, say shalom. Oh, say shalom, Bimroma. Oh, yeah, say shalom, Aleinu. They all call Israel. They move, move, amen. Yeah, say shalom, yeah, say shalom, shalom. Shalom, Yahse Shalom, Sha 
Shalom Aleinu V'yapo Yisrael Yahase Shalom Yahase Shalom Shalom Aleinu V'yapo Yisrael Yahase Shalom Yahase Shalom Shalom Aleinu V'yapo Yisrael Yahase Shalom Shalom bim romav. May the one who causes peace to reign in the high heavens, let peace descend on us, on all Israel, and on all the world, as together we say, Amen. And uh, we're going to take a, a breath, a breather from our liturgy and turn to our guest speaker this evening, I know we're all very thrilled to be welcoming uh, Michelle Paymar into our sanctuary and into our homes. And we're so excited that she can be with us this evening and tomorrow evening as well. You all know that she is uh, the filmmaker of a film called From Cairo to the Cloud. And uh, she will, she's going to talk about that and we're going to get to see the movie tomorrow. Uh, but Michelle Paymar is a filmmaker of many, many talents and many, many interests. And actually, um, one of my favorites of her films is her film about Sippy Wallace. So uh, that was a fantastic film about a blues artist. You, you have to say that if Michelle is a, if there's one word to, to attach to her films, it's, it's, it's diversity. And that's because she is interested in so many things. And so uh, her film about Sippy Wallace became all consuming interest for her. She, she's done films about Sippy Wallace, about blues singers and a film about Alzheimer's, a film about AIDS. Uh, she's worked with uh, so many production companies and uh, broadcasting institutions. And then, uh, frankly, I couldn't believe it when she said she had the most exciting topic of all. She had discovered the Cairo Geniza. And so, uh, Michelle, please uh, transfer that and enthusiasm to us. Uh, tell us about, about that, the making of your film. Uh, we're so interested to hear, and we welcome you uh, wholeheartedly. So come on up to the Bima and... Uh... Well, thank you so much. It's wonderful, wonderful to be here. And Shabbat Shalom, everyone. And thank you, Rabbi Ovner and Temple Beth Akiva for inviting me to join you virtually from Vancouver. I'm trying to sort my screen so that I can actually see you. Um, there we go. Um, and tonight I'm gonna talk to you about my film uh, From Cairo to the Cloud the world of the Cairo Geniza. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the Geniza story, I must warn you that the more you learn about it, the more likely you are to succumb to its enchantments. And that's how I came to spend eight years making a documentary film about it. But just what is the Cairo Geniza? Well, I am so very glad you asked. Well, according to Jewish law, it's forbidden to destroy books or papers containing the name of God. A damaged or unwanted text can't be thrown away like regular garbage. So what do we do with papers that are simultaneously unwanted and indispensable? Typically, they're placed in a box or a room called the Geniza. Sometimes they're left to decay naturally, but often they just pile up until they're eventually removed and buried in a cemetery. But the Cairo Geniza, which was found in the Ben Ezra Synagogue in Old Cairo, is totally unique. Throughout its thousand year history, the Ben Ezra community didn't simply designate a box or a cupboard as their Geniza. They built a room so big, they never had to empty it. So they didn't. And the manuscripts piled up for over 900 years. The community had another unique custom. They didn't deposit only sacred literature and texts with the name of God into their Geniza. They put in everything written in Hebrew letters. 
And in practice, that meant almost everything they wrote down since they spoke Arabic, but wrote Judeo-Arabic, which is Arabic written with Hebrew characters. But they didn't stop there. There are also texts in Arabic, Syriac, Ladino, Greek, French, German, even Yiddish, writings with absolutely no mention of God. It's as if they felt that the written word was itself sacred. When the Cambridge scholar Solomon Schechter first entered the Geniza in 19, 1895, he described it as a battlefield of books overflowing with nearly half a million documents. There were religious texts and medical prescriptions, literary treasures and love letters, marriage contracts and business reports, magical amulets and children's drawings. And if that wasn't enough, the Geniza contained handwritten drafts by the legendary 12th century scholar and physician, Moses Maimonides, unknown gems by the poet Yanai, personal letters written by Judah Halevi, and countless other treasures so varied that the novelist Dara Horn describes the Geniza as the medieval Facebook, an accidental archive of Jewish life as it was lived by this community a thousand years ago. I first read about the Geniza in 2011 in the beautiful book by Adina Hoffman and Peter Cole called Sacred Trash. By the time I read Mark Glickman's book, Sacred Treasure, I was hooked and puzzled. How was it possible that I was just learning about the Cairo Geniza now? This was the greatest story of Jewish discovery I'd never heard of. Before giving too much thought to the folly of making a documentary about documents, I committed to doing it. Documentaries, of course, begin with research. And there was a lot of material to cover. I was deeply aware of the Eastern European world of my ancestors, but knew little about the history of Jews in Islamic countries. Revealed in the Geniza is a huge chapter of that history, the 10th through 13th centuries, when 90% of Jews in the world lived under Islam. Despite episodes of terror and violence, onerous taxes, and second-class status as non-Muslims in a Muslim society, the Jews in medieval Cairo largely flourished. It was a vibrant, thriving community and meshed in the fabric of the larger Muslim and Christian society, yet proudly maintaining its separate Jewish identity. These Jews were part of a global economy with networks reaching from Cairo to India, to Spain, to Samarkand, to France. They weren't relegated to occupational, geographic or cultural ghettos and had much in common with their Muslim and Christian neighbors. But until the Geniza was discovered, we knew almost nothing about them. Today, scholars know a lot, but the Cairo Geniza is still under the radar for most Jews. When I read that there was a massive international project to digitize all the half million Geniza, Geniza documents in the world, I thought it would be an interesting way to approach the story. I called the head of the Taylor Schechter Geniza collection in Cambridge. I was absolutely sure that someone was already filming the digitizing of the last fragments of the largest Jewish archive ever discovered. Well, I was wrong. So in February of 2012, I packed my gear, went to Cambridge and started to film. Over the next few years, I interviewed Geniza scholars in the US, Canada, the UK, France, and Israel, filmed at libraries and private collections, and assembled historical footage. But I felt the documentary wouldn't be complete until I filmed inside the Ben Ezra synagogue itself. After seven years of applications to three different Egyptian governments, the stars finally aligned. With the support of the Jewish community of Cairo, the Canadian consulate, and an Egyptian colleague, I finally got the required permits from five government agencies, the Ministries of the Interior and Antiquities, the State and Tourist Police, and the Press Office. With minders from the government looking over my shoulder, I was finally filming in the Ben Ezra Synagogue. Last February, just before the world shut down, the American University of Cairo screened the film with Arabic subtitles at the campuses in Tahrir Square and New Cairo. The film was well received and followed by interesting discussions with the mostly Muslim audiences. As I was getting ready to leave, people approached me privately to thank me for making a film about Egypt and Egyptian history. 
This came as a complete surprise. I thought I'd made a film about Jews and Jewish history. After the founding of Israel, the 75 to 80,000 Jews living in Egypt were declared enemies of the state. They were expelled, their personal property seized. Today, there are two elderly Jewish women in Cairo, but by Egyptian law, the synagogues, cemeteries, school buildings, and valuable Judaica still belong to the Jewish community. So in the absence of Jews, what is the future of the Jewish past in Egypt? During my visit, a group of Muslim, Christian, and Jewish volunteers was restoring the Bassettine Cemetery, a resting place for Cairo's Jews since the ninth century. With no one left to tend the graves, the cemetery had become a garbage dump and ruin. Now it will be one of several Jewish heritage sites to quote, showcase Egypt's historical pluralism and highlight the country's cultural diversity, end quote. The government seems to be promoting an alternative to seeing Jews exclusively in terms of the Arab-Israeli conflict, and they are funding several restoration projects. It's both heartbreaking and heartening that these sites are being recognized now, and that the young Egyptians at the screening embraced Jewish history as Egyptian history. And I think that finally, in some ways, I'm not so different from those students. Like them, I discovered a part of my own history in the Cairo Geniza. Thank you so much. It's been an honor to share this small piece of the Geniza story with you. And I hope to see all of you at the screening tomorrow. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom and thank you so much, Michelle. Um, I, I'm gonna, I, I'm just gonna invite people that if any, if, if you have any questions for um, Michelle that you can uh, put them in the chat uh, even as we continue in our service, you can put them in the chat. Or if there's something that's that's like on your mind right now, you can just unmute yourself and 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 ask the question if that's um, if you've got something right now that that you'd like to ask Michelle. Here's one. Oh. Uh, Tina Solidker says she, she's shocked that the synagogue wasn't destroyed. Uh, Moshe Shalev, so beautiful, yes. And here's a, oh, here's a good question. Uh, how did you get the funding for such an enormous project? Shall I answer that now? Sure. Or, or tomorrow? It was a combination of different things. Um, some grants, uh, friends and family, and because I'm able to do a lot of things myself and with the technology now, um, there really wasn't all that much that I actually had to pay for. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it still costs money. You have to buy the rights to the music, to all of the clips, um, and a lot of times uh, had to pay for just the right to film somewhere. But um, on the whole, it wasn't a particularly expensive documentary. Well, fortunate for us. And we're very excited to see the film tomorrow. And uh, I'll, I'll tell the congregation too, no secrets, that I, I've seen the film. And so uh, I'm looking forward to seeing it again. Uh, tomorrow evening, we'll reconvene at, at 6.30 at the end of Shabbat. Uh, but we don't want the end of Shabbat to come too fast. So we're going to stay right here right now and continue in our service. Again, if you do have any questions or comments, feel free to use the chat this evening. Uh, but we are going to continue in our service now with our Misha Beirach. And before uh, actually singing that Misha Beirach, I'm going to invite you to uh, go to the chat to add people whose names you would like to have included, people that uh, you would like to have us pray for. Uh, we are going to include in our uh, prayer this evening these members of our congregation, Barbara Stahl, Sam Powell, Gloria Sack, Luca Battisto, Cynthia Greenblatt, Bonnie Stoddard, Karen Flatley, Denny Reed, Hillary Simon, and Buddy Basso. We also include uh, family members, Joan Sidney, David Char, Susan Yaris, 
Tina Chamack, Jay Fliss, Evan Galvin, Deborah Poulin, Gail and Samuel Feidelberg, Dolores Weinzimmer, Melissa Mahalko, Steve Wasserman, Mariel Sheepers, Elizabeth Powers Brown, Greg Warner, Rebecca Hicks, Gladys Handelman, Yvonne Prinsloo, Amy Ostreicher, Bart Young, Matthew Pincus, Ben Peck, Martha and Mark Potter, Kayla Feinkin, Don McCook, Bob Hessen, Harriet Cohn Haggerty, Ken Silberstein, Larry Schwartz, Joan and Myron Katz, Joel Kolker, Bob Evans, Marla Levy Evans, and Patrick McCone. I see others have been included as well in the chat, and we're going to turn now to our Misha Beirach. Misha Five hundred and eighty-six. No, just kidding. It's right on your screen. Alenu le shabeach la don hakol la teid kedula le yotze bereshit shelo asanu kegoyei haratzot velo samanu ki mishpachor hadama shelo sam chalkenu kahem vegor bralenu. to uh, look in the chat here. And Michelle, I see that we had a couple of questions for you. If you could uh, answer them right now. One of the questions, in addition to the thanks and the praise, but one of the questions is, how many of all those languages you listed do you actually know? I I'm still s struggling with my English, but... Um... Yeah, a little bit of Hebrew, a little bit of French, and that's it. Um, okay, well, Michelle's pretty, I, I, I'll call her fluent in French and pretty good in Hebrew. <laughs> thank you, Rabbi. And excellent in English. Oh, the, thank you. Thank you. I'm working on it. Very definitely. And uh, another question that came in. Uh, 
How did the Egyptian government or people align the conflicting opinions about their apparent positive feelings about the project with their negative views of the Jewish people? It, it's really interesting. I, I'm really not quite sure. Um, it just does seem that um, from what I was learning uh, when I was there and afterward is that there seems to be a little bit of a, an intellectual moment right now where um, the, the history of minorities in Egypt is being increasingly understood as part of Egyptian history. And they are basically teasing apart the idea of Jews and the association of Jews with Israel exclusively and embracing this, 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 this larger vision. I don't know where that's gonna go and I'm not really quite sure how conflicting opinions are, are reconciled, but there is a peace between Israel and, uh, and Egypt. And I am also wondering if they might not be, you know, the, the major industry is, is tourism. And I'm, I'm wondering if, if maybe they don't have an eye toward encouraging more uh, Jewish tourists to come to Egypt and explore that history. Yeah, right. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, unfortunately, Sisi was not available at the time. I couldn't sit him down for an interview about the Geniza. <laughs> next time, next trip. Next, uh, next trip. Right. Well, thank you again so much, Michelle. We're really thrilled to have you here tonight and, and so, so looking forward to tomorrow evening with you. I look forward Where, to seeing everyone. Well, excuse me? I look forward to seeing everyone. Excellent. And we're gonna continue now with um, our announcements for the week to come. And so Jill Lesage, are you ready? I'm back up. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Um, as you know, I'm Jill Lesage, co-director of programming on the TBT board. Um, it's wonderful to see all of you this evening and special thanks to Michelle Paymar. We're so honored to have you with us and we're really looking forward to tomorrow evening as, as already has been mentioned. Um, we will gather on Zoom, of course, at 6.30 for Havdalah and to watch Michelle's fascinating film from Cairo to the cloud. Um, you have a Zoom link for the event in your email box, email inbox, I should say. Um, tomorrow morning, our Torah study will be led by Dan Jacoby. That goes from 9 to 10 o'clock a.m., and that link is also in your inbox. Um, Sunday morning, the men of TBT are gathering at 9.30 for a Zoom session with Rabbi Offner. All TBT men are welcome. And next Friday, you'll be sent a link to watch Shabbat services at your own time, and we will gather for the live Zoom, Oneg, from 8 to 8.30 p.m. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, Jill. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, we are going to continue in our service now with this reflection before our Kaddish. It is hard to sing of oneness when our world is not complete. When those who once brought wholeness to our life have gone and naught but memory can fill the emptiness their passing leaves behind. But memory can tell us only what we were in company with those we loved. It cannot help us find what each of us alone must now become. Yet no one is really alone. Those who live no more echo still within our thoughts and words. And what they did is part of what we have become. We do best homage to our dead when we live our lives more fully, even in the shadow of our loss. For each of our lives is worth the life of the whole world. And each one is the breath of the ultimate one. In affirming the one, we affirm the worth of each one whose life now ended brought us closer to the source of life in whose unity no one is alone and every life finds purpose. Uh, at this time, I am going to uh, acknowledge those who have passed away in the last 30 days. And first, I, I, I want to acknowledge Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs. Our Jewish world has lost uh, a beacon of righteousness and justice and vision. And not, not, not just our Jewish world, because uh, Rabbi Sachs was, was spokesperson to leaders of, of religions around the world. 
uh, to the Church of England in his own home country, uh, to the Pope himself. And uh, Rabbi Sachs brought Judaism to life in a way that, that touches us all and will continue to touch us all as inevitably we will look to his writings to find inspiration for the future. Um, I, I also want to include Alex Trebek. Um, Alex Trebek was not Jewish, but Jeopardy was because Jeopardy is about as Jewish a show as you can get focusing and honoring the questions that we ask. And uh, so many Jewish people, I, I have a couple of high school buddies who were on Jeopardy and, and treated so kindly and welcomingly by Alex Trebek. And, and also the Jewish subjects. It was something that, that congregants loved to share with me when they would get those questions right on, on Jeopardy, those Jewish categories. So as a shout out to Alex Trebek, our men's club is gonna be uh, doing some Jewish Jeopardy on Sunday morning. Uh, but we, we remember him and are saddened by his loss. We also remember Selma Fishkind, an uh, aunt of, of Maureen Freed, who passed away uh, in these last 30 days. And we remember those for whom we observe your sight, David Kaposi, Miriam Engel, Fanny Stein, Jerry Kinman, Ron Liuma, Oscar Sapir, Lena Gammerman, Sherman Alpert, Beryl Weinstein, Eli Schnapper, Jack Hyman, Estelle Silberstein, Gustav Mueller, Lori Sachs Rice, Mordko Esterlees, and Tessie Galvin. I invite you also to include names in our Kaddish by adding them uh, to the chat. And if you yourself are in mourning or observing a yurt site, I, I invite you to uh, unmute yourselves as your words of Kaddish are, are the most powerful and most significant ones. Though I understand that on Zoom, it, it, it sounds um, a little bit complicated, but uh, hearing those voices is so important. So please unmute yourselves and, and softly uh, I invite you to join in our Kaddish prayer and for everyone else who is on mute to join in our Kaddish prayer as together as uh, one community, we rise for Kaddish. Yid Kadal v'yid Kadash Shemei Rabba v'yalma divrach yurute v'yamlich malkute La Ela Miko Kata Vishiraka, Tushbukata Venechemata, Da Amiram the Alma, the Imru Ame. Yehe Shlama Raba Min Shemaya, the Chaim Amin, Israel, the Imru Ame. O Se Shalom the Roma, who ya a Se Shalom, Alenu Vial Kol Yisrael, the Imru. On me. May God grant peace to all who mourn, and may we be a source of comfort to all who are bereaved. As together we say, Amen. 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 Cantor, I'm going to ask you to unmute. And uh, we are going to close our service this evening. Uh, we thought about what would be appropriate given the, the spirit of, of our talk this evening, of Michelle's talk and her visit to Egypt. And we thought, uh, Odia vo Shalom, with Shalom and Salam 
uh, we, um, we, we are given hope that our world may yet know peace. Uh, Mr. Boyle, you take it away. So everyone's going to leave tonight knowing at least a little Arabic, right? Salam, peace. trying times for the uplift that coming together brings. We have learned how to come together. We are the Jews. We do what we do and no one stops us because it is so important to be together, to raise our voices in song and in prayer, to see one another, to connect, to learn from our scholar and to look forward to another evening of joy tomorrow evening as well. So a beautiful Shabbat to everybody. Enjoy this blessed time. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Um, shalom. Thank you, Michelle. Can't wait till tomorrow night. Shabbat shalom. shalom. Thank you, Shabbat too, shalom. and Apple. Shabbat, for shalom. Being Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.